the most brutal and barbaric case of digital tampering ever. Unveiling the truth behind Cafe Olivier CCTV footage manipulation by Indonesian police officers. Evidence for comparing coffee colors while reducing the frame resolution from 1920 by 1080 pixels to 960 by 576 pixels. Christopher Hariman Rianto deliberately split CCTV 9 footage into two segments as follows. Segment 1, 1535 to 1659 local time. The dimensions of the frame were reduced to 960 by 576 pixels and frame rate were, were reduced to 10 frames per second. The coffee color here was captured when Agustriono served coffee at table 54. Segment 2, 1659 to 1825 local time. The frame dimensions remain full high definition, 1920 by 1080 pixels, and frame rate remain at 25 frames per second. The coffee color here was captured when Sari took the coffee cup after Mirna Salihin drank from it. Analysis. Reducing the frame resolution from 1920 by 1080 pixels to 960 by 576 pixels in the CCTV video 9, specifically during the segments described, can have significant forensic implications, particularly when comparing coffee colors. 1. Loss of color detail. The reduction in frame resolution results in a loss of color detail, making it challenging to accurately capture and analyze subtle differences in the coffee colors depicted in the footage. Fine variations in hue, saturation, and brightness may be lost or distorted impacting the re reliability of color comparisons between the two segments. 2. Decrease clarity. The lower frame resolution diminishes the overall clarity and sharpness of the imagery, potentially affecting the visibility and distinction of the coffee colors. Critical visual cues necessary for discerning differences in color between the segments, such as the intensity of the coffee hue or any variations in color gradient, may be compromised, hindering accurate forensic analysis. Three, impair color consistency. The discrepancy in frame resolution between the segments introduces inconsistencies in the portrayal of coffee colors, as the lower resolution may alter the, the rendering of color information. This inconsistency makes it challenging to establish a reliable baseline for comparing coffee colors across the segments, leading to potential inaccuracies or misinterpretations in forensic assessments. 4. Impact on comparative analysis. The disparity in frame resolution and subsequent differences in color representation pose challenges for conducting comparative analysis of the copy colors captured in each segment. Without uniformity in resolution, color fidelity and image clarity, it is impossible to draw conclusive findings regarding any discrepancies or similarities in the coffee colors observed. Therefore, the forensic impact 
of reducing the frame resolution during the specified segments of CCTV video 9 affects the accuracy and reliability of comparing coffee colors. It underscores the importance of maintaining consistent image quality and resolution to facilitate accurate forensic analysis and interpretation of visual evidence. The results of color comparison, comparison were utilized by toxicologist Imade Agus Gelgel Wirasuta and Nur Samran Subandi as a gateway to analyzing cyanide decomposition. However, it is essential to highlight the potential inaccuracies inherent in their findings. 1. Lack of precision Due to the compromised image quality resulting from the reduction in frame resolution, the color comparison may lack precision and reliability. Fine nuances and subtle variations in color, crucial for identifying chemical compounds like cyanide, may be obscured or misrepresented, leading to potential inaccuracies in the analysis. 2. Ambiguity in interpretation. The diminished clarity and fidelity of the coffee colors captured in the CCTV footage <laughs> introduced ambiguity in their interpretation. Without a clear and consistent visual representation, determining the presence or absence of cyanide decomposition based solely on color differences becomes subjective and prone to misinterpretation. 3. Inconclusive findings. The discrepancies in color representation across the segments of the CCTV footage undermine the conclusiveness of the toxicologist findings without a robust foundation of accurate and consistent visual data, their analysis may yield inconclusive or unreliable results, complicating the determination of cyanide decomposition and impending the investigative process. 4. Potential for misdiagnosis. Relying on flawed or unreliable color comparisons to assess cyanide decomposition poses the risk of misdiagnosis or false conclusions. Inaccurate findings based on compromised visual evidence may lead to erroneous conclusions regarding the presence or absence of toxic substances, potentially impacting legal proceedings and compromising justice. In summary, the utilization of color comparison from the CCTV footage as a basis for analyzing cyanide decomposition by the toxicologist may be fraught with inaccuracies and limitations due to the compromised quality of the visual data. These factors underscore the importance of exercise, exercising caution and employing supplementary methodologies to ensure the accuracy and reliability of forensic analysis in such cases. The inaccurate results from both toxicologists regarding the association of cyanide involvement in Jessica Wongso's case have significant implications. These inaccuracies cast doubt on the reliability of the entire forensic analysis conducted during the trial. It undermines the credibility of the evidence presented by the prosecution, potentially leading to miscarriages of justice. Moreover, it raises concerns about the competence and integrity of the forensic experts involved in the investigation. Such inaccuracies not only jeopardize, jeopardize the fair, fairness of the trial, but also hinder the pursuit of truth and justice. The judges, Binsar Gultum, Kiswaro, and Partahi Tulusotapaya, Utapaya's reliance on the inaccurate 
Findings of Toxicologist Imade Agus Gelgel Wirasuta and Nur Samran Subandi significantly affected the outcome of the, of the case against Jessica Wongso. Firstly, these inaccuracies cast doubt on the credibility of the prosecution's evidence if the evidence used to support the allegations of poisoning, poisoning particularly the presence of cyanide, is flawed, it undermines the foundation of the entire case. The reliability of forensic evidence is crucial in criminal proceedings and any discrepancies can weaken the prosecution's argument. Secondly, the judge's decision based on flawed evidence highlights potential flaws in the judicial process. The duty of the court is to ensure a fair and impartial trial based on credible evidence. However, if the judges base their verdict on inaccurate or unreliable information, it calls into question the, integri in the integrity of the legal system. This can erode public trust in the judiciary and raise concerns about the fairness of the future trials. Lastly, the impact of these inaccuracies extends beyond Jessica Wongso's case. It sets a precedent for future legal proceedings where similar issues of evidence reliability may arise. The judge's reliance on flawed evidence underscores the importance of rigorous scrutiny and verification of forensic findings in court. Moving forward, it em emphasizes the need for greater oversight and adherence to standards of evidence in order to uphold the principles of justice and ensure fair trials for all parties involved. Thank you very much.